Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Dr. Patricia Carrington's Original Choices Method. I'm Jackie Footman of EFT Devon and I'm accredited to train EFT with EFT International. So the Choices Method is a very specific way to tap. It was first introduced by Dr. Patricia Carrington, known as Pat Carrington. She was a very well-known name in the EFT community. Um, she, she started right back there with Gary Craig, one of the pioneers of AccuPoint tapping. And for a while, she ran a certification program alongside the original EFT. Um, she introduced Choices Method, also calling it Choices Trio, which you will understand when you see how we do it. It's a very specific way to tap where you use three sequences rather than the usual one sequence in the tapping round. So a Choices Trio tapping round has three sequences in it. It's also quite important that the setup statement is carefully thought out and negotiated. So clearly, if the setup statement needs to be discussed, negotiated, um, it's not those tapping like those tapping rounds where you just spontaneously choose to say something like "I choose." instead of the usual, I deeply and completely accept myself. So some, some practitioners do do that. And it's, it's a really good way to flex the setup statement, but it's not what this tutorial is about. This is about using the choices method or the choices trio. So the first step, you need a tapping target like in any EFT tapping. So choose the negative thing that you want to reduce the intensity of your tapping target. And then once you have clearly identified the negative target, then you're going to choose the positive opposite. And this is why it's called the choices method because you use that positive choice. So how you define your positive choice is quite important here. You want it to be as aspirational as possible. Um, you want to select your words carefully. You want it to be the highest possible positive that you could aim for. But at the same time, don't make it such that it feels impossible. You want that choice to feel at least somewhat achievable. So find that happy medium as you've probably worked out already, your own words are really important. So if you're doing this for yourself, just be really true to yourself and how you feel and what you would like as your choice. And if you as a practitioner are working on this with a client, then negotiate this with the client, ask the client lots of questions to make sure you get that wording at the best it can possibly be. So, I've just come up with one example here. It's a phobia that is so common, public speaking and anxiety about performing in public, say giving a talk. So if you first of all <clears throat> identify exactly what it is, be specific. So, <clears throat> excuse me, is it that you are worried about giving the talk? Is it that it, you're a bit nervous or are you absolutely terrified? So just say exactly how you feel about doing this when you, when you imagine yourself doing it. Just allow yourself to tune in and define the feeling. And then maybe identify why it is. Um, what, is it because there'll be everyone looking at you? Is it because you're afraid of doing something wrong? Um, so just work out the reason. Ideally, put that into 
the words. So you're going to start with even though, and then you'll put in your tapping target. If it feels too much to remember or too long, just shorten it a bit. But you just got to do it the way that feels exactly right for you. There's there's no um, there's no absolutes in this. It's a user friendly technique, so make it work for you. And the choice statement I've come up with in this example is I choose easily, confidently, and perfectly to deliver this talk. And this is what I mean by making it your highest aspiration. You could just say, I choose calmly to, get to deliver this talk, or I choose confidently to deliver this talk. But you can put several adjectives in there if you want to. Again, if that makes it too cumbersome for you, then keep it short and sweet. Just make this work for you. This is this such an important principle with tapping that the words are your words and it feels right for you. So, so now we've got our statement and the choice. So we need to know the points. So like any tapping, you're gonna have a setup statement that starts with even though, and you're gonna repeat it three times while you tap this point on the side of hand. Then you go on to the sequence, the normal tapping points, the sequence, you're probably familiar with these, the top of head, eyebrow, side of eye, under eye, nose, chin, collarbone, and underarm. Eight points, and it's important to do all those eight, not to change them, um, because in one of the sequences, that even number is very important. So on to how we tap then. So for the choices trio, so you have your setup statement and I'll um, talk you through how to do around with, the, with that example. But for the purpose of this video, I will shorten the example. You can make it as long as you like when you do your own one. So I'll shorten it to even though I'm worried about this talk, I choose to let it be easy. So you repeat that statement three times while you're tapping the side of hand. Even though I'm worried about this talk, I choose to let it be easy. Even though I'm worried about this talk, I choose to let it be easy. Even though I'm worried about this talk, I choose to let it be easy. Then you repeat the tapping target, the negative, so this will be the first time of three around the, the sequence, starting at the top of the head to repeat the negative. Worried about this talk, eyebrow, worried about this talk, side of eye, worried about this talk, under eye, worried about this talk, nose, worried about this talk, and the chin point, worried about this talk, collarbone point, worried about this talk and under the arm, worried about this talk. And then you go through the same points again, but this time you repeat the choice. So same points from the top of the head. Choose to let it be easy. 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 So that's your second round of the sequence. And then to complete the trio, your third round of the sequence, again, starting at the top of the head, but this time you alternate your negative tapping target with the positive choice. So you start with the negative. Worried about this talk. And then at the eyebrow point, switch to the positive. Choose to let it be easy. And then at the side of I, go back to the negative, worried about this talk. And then at the under I, switch to the choice, the positive. I choose to let it be easy. And so on, nose, worried about this talk. Chin, I choose to let it be easy. Collarbone, I'm worried about this talk. And underarm, your last point, I choose to let it be easy. And that's my choice. I like to add in that last bit for emphasis. 
And just to emphasize, you must finish on the positive. That's why the eight points of a sequence are important for that third tapping round. You start with the negative and you finish with the positive. So there you have one round of Pat Carrington's Choices Method or Choices Trio. And you can repeat that as many times as you need. You can slightly alter the words if you find that you need to. So ways to use the Choices Trio. Some people like to start their day with a Choices Trio or several rounds of Choices Trio. So, so imagine there's several things in your day that are causing you some trepidation. What if you did one round of choices for each thing? What if you worked out what it is you're worried about or, or is causing you some slight bother and you set the highest intention for that thing, for that activity, and you make a really lovely positive choice and you just take a, a minute or two to tap that in and have a great day. So that's one way just to, to help your day along. Another way is if sometimes there are things which have just been with you all of your life and you can do a session of tapping and it may help a bit, but we don't work miracles overnight. So you need to be persistent with the tapping on these, these more in-depth issues. So I've, given, I've made an example of say anger um, it could be sadness, it could be grief, um, it could be anxiety, whatever you, you feel has been there with you for a long time and it's ongoing and some per persistent daily tapping will help it. So on the next slide, you'll see the example. Um, but I also want to mention the third point here first that you, if you are seeing a practitioner, this is an easy way to do some regular tapping in between sessions. So, so here's the example then. If you have this emotion that is built up over years and years, it, it's almost like there's a pot of it. There's a never ending supply. As soon as you tap some of it away, you might have a really good session and neutralize the emotional charge from a past event, but then there's a lot more events. And although it, after several sessions, it will make a big, a big difference, you still need to do some regular persistent tapping. Persistence, as Gary Craig says, was the most important thing after being specific to get success with tapping. So it's like there's a pot of it that's built up over the years. So in this example, even though I have this pot of anger, that's your negative tapping target. And my example for the choice, I choose easily to feel calm and happy. But you work out what is your positive choice. Remember to use your own words with this. This is just an example to get you started. So, as I said, this is something that you can easily do on a daily basis. You can make it something quick at the start of your day. You don't need to rate your score like you normally do with tapping. You always give whatever emotion or feeling or pain you're going to tap on a score from zero to 10 when you start tapping and you check in with your score again at the end. Well, you can do that with the choices method. But if you're just using it as a daily tapping thing, you really don't need to. It just, it just becomes another burden and you want to be able to do this regularly, quickly, often during your day. So make it as simple as possible. Score if you want to, if it helps you, but you don't have to. So if you're not scoring, a good way to tune in would be to just take a moment to ponder the words. Again, if you want to, if you want to just get tapping with exactly the same wording every time, that is fine as well. 
sometimes just thinking about the words and is this my absolute truth or do I want to tweak this in some way? Um, that will help you get tuned in. It will help make the tapping more powerful. So, but make it easy for yourself. I'm a great believer in adjusting this so that you can do it because the great thing about tapping is it works, but only if you do it. So this is where the challenge lies, is making it easy for you to do. So just do it whenever you get a moment. And if you've slightly forgotten the words, doesn't matter, just do it anyway. Everything, this isn't something you're doing one off. So every little bit you do is going to help in the long run. And if you check in maybe from week to week on what it's achieved for you by doing this daily, you might be very pleasantly surprised. So um, if you're seeing a practitioner, then it's a great way to keep up some tapping in between sessions. And if you are a practitioner, it's great to, at the end of a session, discuss the words that your client could use for a choices trio that they can do in between sessions until the next time you see them. So thank you for listening today. If you would like further training, please contact me um, through eftdevon.com forward slash courses. 